memorable moment today and I feel extremely honored and grateful to the Academy for giving me this opportunity and honor today to be here as a part of its distinguished fellowship. When I was asked to provide one suitable title which can address the wide range of audience today. So it was really a challenge to me and I decided to share some special feelings and events or rather some special moments during the last 25 years journey in the, in the field of antenna engineering. So I exactly remember it is 1996, exactly 25 years ago, it is the summer. And the General Assembly of in International Union of Radio Science, it was in Lille, France, in north of France. And my participation was one of the young scientists, award recipients, so one Indian group you can see from here. But my intention was to interact with this all-time legend in our field, Professor Tatsu Ito. That year he was the commission the chair is a too busy person and the gathering was around 3000 participants from the whole world so it was very difficult for me to find a good time for, to talk to him so my intention was to discuss about him and uh, i was just starting my career as a young teacher in one indian university so i was curious to talk to him to find some new suggestion from him he immediately, within two, three uh, minutes talk, he immediately pointed out this topic, active antenna, that was a triggering moment in my life. And he advised me to pick up this area because it was booming that time. Interestingly, antenna was not my topic, not my, my area of interest at all. So I was in the field of transmission line. So anyway, I accepted his word and tried to understand from a piece of work by a different group of researchers from Texas A&M University, Professor Kai Cheng. I found that he was trying to solve some problem as an integrated antenna where you see it is the active device integrated with one printed circuit antenna. So, you know, printed circuit antenna is now covering everywhere, starting from your pocket to satellite, from defense radar to monitoring your health and your heart. So then I tried to understand the, what's the, their work and what's the problem. And I found that in their structure, they're trying to create some multi-layered structure and every time they are doing some characterization experimentally and they are missing some theory because no simulation tool was available that time. So I picked up the problem and extensively studied that part and published my first work in one IEEE journal. And you see I was alone because it is the almost the end of the last century. And electronics engineers are busy with some other business, not in research. So it was very difficult to find out a good scholar, a good student to work. So anyway, so I started alone and developed a complete theory. And by that time, one student joined. This is the theory for the antenna, what Kai Chang and his group was working on. I published this, that work and interestingly, Within three or four months from this publication, I received one request from Canada, defense. It is Canada Government Laboratory, it is partly defense lab, the communication research center. The first request was that we are interested to your work. So can you share your code for their uh, design? Well, so no problem, we shared our code with them. Next request came 
So no, it is not very easy to run your code. So you please send the full design. That was really a big challenge and suspense to all of to to me and to my student that when you are giving a complete package of design and after testing in a different laboratory, a different country, if this doesn't work, then it's a matter of prestige. Anyway, there is no point to to return. So we we sent our design. And 1.9 gigahertz, you can uh, see it is a very lucrative band for the PCS and a lot of wireless communication at that time. CRC informed their outcome. And interestingly, their outcome was really excellent. So when they asked for 1.9, their measured result was 1.87, so less than 1% error. It was a, a big satisfaction and uh, very, very, very much. We are encouraged too much and try to find out new problems from the contemporary developments. So during our time, our, our resources, mainly the hard copies, little bit online. I just mentioned about one development in, in 1990s, very significant, that is photonic band gap. Photonic band gap, it is, it is actually a, a concept shared from the photonic crystal, their periodic band gap structure. The same thing they applied, that is uh, microstrip people or the microwave printer circuit people, they applied the same concept by applying some periodic defects on its ground plane. The purpose was to create some stop band property for different types of applications. I remember around 2002, suddenly I noticed a beautiful combination of photonic band gap because it was a buzzword at the time and antenna. What's that? It was really interesting. The work was in, published in 1999. So one simple printed antenna with array of defects on the ground plan. What's the purpose of that one? The purpose was to filter out its higher harmonics. If there is any harmonics, it will filter it out. Actually, these two elements are sufficient to work. And they are giving beautiful results because they're filtering out the higher harmonics, that is higher frequencies, and the fundamental is working fine. No problem. The question came to me, what's the purpose of the other defects? No answer, because I found it, it is not for profit. Profit means, to an antenna engineer, profit means it is the antenna. Either I need to increase its operating bandwidth or its radiation property or its gain. So one idea we got suddenly, how can I use defect? And I'm showing quickly from our hand-drawn figure, the concept we, we developed, there's only two defects we are putting for one circular microstrip radiator. It looks like it is for fabrication. When it's fabricated, it looks like this. It is from backside, it is from top side. And I just mentioned about the modes. This is the desired mode that is going to radiate from this antenna. But it is always associated with this, the secondary mode. But it is not, it is very harmful, like a virus. So our, our aim was to generate some vaccine nowadays it is, it is very popular vaccine vaccine everyone is trying for having one vaccine one dose or a couple of doses now so this two defects just the concept was to to apply vaccine so that this virus does not disturb no problems we did it question is how to test the first part was not a very difficult task. In our laboratory, we tested it. The second part was its radiation measurement. And we need very, very sophisticated chamber to measure it. So that was not ready at that time with us. And fortunately, I got a chance to visit uh, abroad. So it is the Canadian Defense Institute. So I had an assignment for a long time assignment, more than a year. So I carried the, that piece of work with me tested it, and I'm showing the results. Wonderful result you got, the expected separation we achieved. So we first 
reported this paper that is defective ground structure, in short, he called DGS. It is for antenna application. And immediately another concept came in, in our mind that the same defect you can use for a pair of or multiple elements. What for? To stop their mutual coupling. Mutual coupling, that is when the crosstalk happens, they're going to create a big disturbance in the radiation pattern that is called their scan blindness, which is a dangerous issue, particularly in terms of radar. So the scan blindness can be reduced, and that was reported just within a couple of years of our first work. And we found the huge interest worldwide. And we're feeling that one, and suddenly I received on communication from ENCAR, that is American National Center for Atmospheric Research. They're doing all radar type of business for atmospheric radar, and they're interested, and they first showed that your structure is very interesting because it is very, very low weight, and simultaneously it handles two major issues. One is the scan blindness, another is its cross polarization, and we are trying to develop. So they collaborated and they tried to understand many things from our group. And you see, one by one, modern books, they are trying to giving more emphasis on the on the DGS based antennas. Our own ISRO, they also started working on this this defective structure based new antenna development. And for you, I have collected one beautiful information just yesterday that you see. You can go to Google and uh, write DGS in antenna. So now you can find more than 5 lakh, 5 lakh 44,000 documents that generated in the last 15 years. I'm sharing a new story. That is also very interesting to me. The story is a bit cold story because it is the Canadian winter and real Canadian winter. So one uh, British Chinese and later on Canadian, that lady student, she came to my my office and asked me, Dr. Good, do you know DRA? I told yes, I know because it is dielectric resonator antenna I've heard, but I have no basic knowledge about this. But why? She asked that I, I need some uh, some basic understanding. I'm facing some problems. So I thought if you could help. Said, OK, don't worry, Lucia. Can you give me one book? No, no book is available. OK. So some papers. So next day she came with a bunch of papers. My God, it's a couple of files. And uh, she left with me. I studied for a couple of weeks and found it very interesting. Really, just within within a couple of weeks, I started working on that and I asked Lucia that I have a new idea. So you try to solve this problem quickly. And just within a few months, we published our first paper. Our Canadian advisor, so he was very, very supportive. So he also, she also encouraged. So very quickly, I started working on parallelly because that was my work and some dielectric resonator antennas. We came back in 2007, just within two hours, it was uh, the Silver Jubilee year of dielectric resonator antenna, and the, he's the found he's the inventor of DRA. Professor Stuart Long from University of Houston. So he gave one beautiful talk in that year, in 2007, November. And later on, I collected his slide and he mentioned, I got this information, he mentioned about our India in a, in a very nice way. So Indian flag, our West Bengal, our university logo, Calcutta University logo, et cetera, et cetera. So we found no, it is a prominent thing to what, what we contributed on this DRA. I'm taking a, a couple of minutes, maybe. So I tried to go back to basics. Because I mentioned that science to engineering and engineering to science, because we had to do both parallelly for our own survival. 
So I tried to find some basic article that was published in 1984 by two giant uh, contributors in this field, Kaffes and Gleason. I'm showing some interesting results from their, that old paper. They were all theoretical uh, results they are publishing. Interestingly, you look at the first three modes, those are applicable to antenna. Question is, the fourth mode is not. No antenna engineer does this mode and why, I don't know. You look at this model field, definitely it is going to radiate. Its problem is, it is conflicting at the ground plane, which is not for the other modes. Anyway, so that's our challenge. And we accepted this challenge and tried to solve it. I'm not going to detail the, the solution, but after we solved it, I'm going to show you the results using their particular sample. You look at this mode, what he generated in 2011, and that was the hand drawn mode in 1984. Exactly the same mode was generated. And these are the results later on we, we generated with our prototype. And not only that, we reported this new possibility and published a few more advanced techniques so that this mode can be used. Last nine years, starting from that, the DRA people have not shared this mode in a beautiful way. And now you can see it is, I have collected for you more than 4,500 results you can get in one click. Why? Because this is a very special mode. It facilitates the DRA in reality, especially in on-chip solution. Because by any kind of surface wave, when a chip, it is very difficult to integrate multiple stuff together. So on-chip solution, it is the best one. Anyway, I, I, I discussed some success stories, but not the failures. There are a lot of failures. And my students are my associates during this long journey, and it is all due to them. So a group of brilliant students, if you already graduated and few are working at present. And my tribute to all my friends, colleagues, my teachers who have enlightened me over this journey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Guha, for a very accessible and lucid talk. There are many comments on your talk on YouTube channel saying that was fantastic storyline and beautifully <laughs> presentation. Okay. Thanks for that. Any, any, technical, any technical query from their side, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, there is one question from uh, Professor Baskaran. Comment and the question. Uh, it is, bats use their own antenna for receiving ultrasound signals. Do these active bats use principles of active antenna used for electromagnetic radiation in the modern times? Uh, could you please repeat? I, I could not follow. Okay, I'll repeat. So yeah. the first is a first part is a comment. Bats use their own antenna for receiving ultrasound signals. Bats as in the mammal who fly. Okay, okay, uh, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Do these active bats use the principles of active antenna used for electromagnetic radiation in modern times? Well. There, uh, the, the question, the answer cannot be just yes or no. So there are different purposes of using this uh, integrated antenna or active antenna. So mm -hmm. there are various types of possibilities and various types of applications. So particularly NASA was interested. It is a kind of quasi-optical power combining. Just simple, so when you are going to watch your cricket match, in a in a big ground what do we do we do use an array of lights so when you want to illuminate by electromagnetic wave so one single element is not sufficient so we need the array of antennas 
So they did not like this array of antennas. Rather, they tried to integrate the active device with the antenna together and multiple act active devices together with the antenna, single antenna. Okay. Uh, there is one more question, uh, yeah. Professor Guha, from uh, Professor Jayant Haritsa. Uh, the yes. question is, does DGS impact the weight or volume of the antenna? Excellent question. No. That's why the space people or airborne people are very much excited because it is not, in, rather it is reducing weight. It is not adding any additional cost, additional device, no additional burden. So only you need to design very simple structure and that has to be implemented in the, in the form of etching. That's all. Okay. All right. I'll just check once again if there are any other questions. Uh, there are no other questions. Uh, please join me in thanking Professor Guha for a very lucid presentation. Thank you.